Panic Surfer 13, I'm bipolar, and while it has never turned me into an anti-Semite, one uh, hypomanic episode resulted in me writing a novella starring a protagonist that was a colony of centipedes in a man suit who worked at the deli. I thought it was genius until I came down. I mean, it sounds like more Send genius. It it's uh, honestly like it, it, it sounds more interesting than say you know anything that's come out of Kanye's latest uh, episode. Right. And like the the Kanye stuff, it's like like I said about the Jan Six stuff. I'm sure a lot of those people have mental illnesses too. It's but it's like it's it's hard for me to like ignore the coincidence that like so much of culture in America is driven post Citizens United by trying to get one of these two parties elected. You had the House Judiciary GOP saying Elon Trump Kanye. That's our triumvirate for like leading into this midterm. And like I'm not saying like. Kanye's conscious or even Candace Owens is conscious but there's a a sort of like pressure to heighten these sorts of things and I like for the purpose of getting Republicans elected um, and I'm not really I guess I'm not sure exactly what point I'm making there but I, I feel like it's it's important to point out guys we're still live on the other stream yeah I'm, I'm about oh, to okay, show you okay that. okay just letting you know um, uh, but yeah I mean the, I was trying to like have this conversation not very intelligently. Maybe I, I can ask you guys what you think, um, because I feel like there's like, especially in relation to Kyrie Irving and the anti-Semitic stuff that he's been sharing, there is a sensitivity that I like. I, sometimes I just I don't want to come off as, you know, like white woman who's completely dismissing some of what is uh, connected to with like black hebrew israelites because it is like an e effort to empower or, or it's like you know the relationship between you know uh black people in this country and also uh the power and discrimination it's very different in the way that jewish people have been discriminated against and so i can see why some people are falling victim to that narrative in a different way that's like distinct from right-wing conservatives falling to it uh but i haven't i haven't like thought about that enough to to articulate my thoughts uh better on that anyone want to wade into these really really treacherous waters or no just me i mean uh what's, what's the question <laughs> there is no question uh, just just like how it's just it's different it, there's like a difference in approach i think than like standard right-wing anti-semitism and when you're in analyzing it you know i agree i think we can recognize that there are through lines within our culture that encourage people to be anti-semitic to be racist to be xenophobic and that depending on where you happen to lie on the like you know identity five point like pentagram chart that they make for uh, overwatch characters you might find yourself more amenable to people like you or like you might be more against people like you who who knows right um i think that where we try to have a little bit more empathy is towards people who don't fall within traditionally privileged groups, at least within America, because obviously if you are born in America and you have American citizenship, you on a global scale have some sort of privilege, right? We try to, you know, engage with the idea that, you know, people coming from non-privileged backgrounds are perhaps even more susceptible to the kinds of dangerous propaganda that America has had underpinning its culture since the beginning. You know, this is not the first time that groups of people who are marginalized have been put against each other by this country in order to, you know, promote an overarching uh, capitalist structure. We know that in many ways when slavery was going on, there was this encouraging of like poor whites in the South to like buy at least one slave so that you can at least have someone to lord it over. And that's just, I think generally if you abstracted enough part of the problem in America that we have right. a version of freedom that is inherently about who you get to oppress. And so when we get to these questions about like how do you tell if black people are free in this country, it becomes about like who's a billionaire, how many people they have working for them, you know, whether or not they can do Instacart shopping this way and like be a shitty consumer. It's, you know, we just have a blind spot for people in power and we're always looking for reasons to absolve them of what they're doing. And we also have a blind spot for certain types of bigotry. And so I think it's good that he's getting pushed back because you know, like people in like the I am or said, like plenty of people have uh, mental illness, plenty of people have mental disabilities that don't like lead them to be anti-Semitic. And so we have to tackle the parts of our culture that do lead people to be anti-Semitic, not just those who have mental illness, but those who don't. And also we have to speak to the specifics of, I think, Kanye's case, which is that he's being purposefully misled astray by people like Candace Owens. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, well said. I just, I do think, like, it is a, the, the perception of, like, empowerment as a zero-sum game is one that can, like, people can easily fall into, and I feel like... Kyrie Irving in particular is 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 pushing that kind you of You saw crap. it with the Covington Catholic uh, controversy um, that was between like those Catholic school kids and um, uh, black Hebrew Israelites and that um, the guy who wasn't a vet who whatever be into it but like um, and and the thing is like at that point it's like well if like Obama had in his cabinet somebody who was a black Hebrew Israelite who was like saying we need to uh, you know do Middle East policy based on this but then it like maybe I think we can actually be as concerned about um, say white supremacists in uh, actual positions of power too it's a triviality kind of at this point and it um, it's in terms of the broader political level until it gets to this point of like you know people are promoting it in again the context of like right in the lead up into an election I, yeah. I just feel it does have a radicalizing element to it as well where we're seeing that you know it, it 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 is a if not fully perfectly aligned with the republican party it is still in essence it's a conservative movement that is one that like yes. writes that um yeah that that paints wide swaths of people with a, 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 a negative perception so that yeah. that i think is how it needs to be framed no i think it's difficult to talk about certain things like this at least when we talk about it on like the you know current way we understand politics on like a left right spectrum because stuff like you know america has a lot of fringe groups in it that don't traditionally fit onto that left right spectrum a lot of neo fascists don't traditionally fit onto that left right spectrum and so we don't you know when we talk about that we have to be a little bit more i guess understanding of the nuances of it but i think there you know it's not we can focus on black Hebrew Israelites, but I don't think that there's anything substantially different about them as a group versus other types of fringe politics slash cultural groups that exist in this country who are obsessed with alternative histories, who are obsessed with mysticism, who are obsessed with like, you know, gender roles. Like these are things that once you abstract them enough, we can see like parallels to all sorts of groups in this society. So we can do, I mean, let's just do a better job of teaching history. Let's do a better job of situating people and American atrocities in their place in history. And then there'll be less room for conspiracy theories like this and QAnon or anything that relies on people's right. ignorance to spread. But, you know, we don't have a, you know, we don't really have that kind of like view about critical in, I mean, critical thinking in the society. It's a, we just kind of have battling propagandas a lot of times. So people Absolutely. can choose their own. Yeah. They can choose their own adventure in that sense. So like, yeah, some people are going to choose like black Hebrew, Israelite, like Afrofuturism. Like, you know, I dig it. I like, I like looking at a sphinx. I like looking at a sphinx with, like, with an afro. <laughs> Everyone I, I loves a good sphinx. Like. Everyone loves a good sphinx, except for Harry Potter in the, the <laughs> Goblet of Fire uh, Triwizard Tournament. They did cut that out of the movie. Uh, but they that did was, cut that out of the movie. That sphinx what did they evil. do? What, what was the sphinx thing? I forget this it, part. It asks him a question and Harry gets it like right, which is like the only time in like the entire book series Harry gets a question right when asked, <laughs> basically. So I'm, I'm, it's a really shame they cut it out of the movie. It's in the maze in like the final Triwizard Tournament. Oh, right, uh, right. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, glad uh, you guys were able to like completely carry me in my half-baked uh, uh, ideas there. So appreciate it. Um, Wendell B. I do find it interesting that people are giving Kanye the benefit of the doubt. He's being led to this belief, whereas people haven't for people who aren't celebrities. Also, Ye didn't become this way overnight oh, I he think it's taking wrong. his med. I, I think I'm not he, giving him the benefit of the doubt. Well, no, like, I mean, as far as, like, normal people, um, what, what was, it, like, Kanye's being given a benefit of the doubt that normal people aren't afforded. I think a lot of this stuff, like, we are in racist uh really problematic religiously fundamentalist culture that people can get easily swept up into i i think you always i think you shouldn't um i think you should always have a little bit of empathy for people who are propagandized um and like i, I mean you can understand these ideas to be completely ludicrous without I think the need to like say this is purely the individual's responsibility is not going to get us anywhere because we're not seeing a these sorts of problems because individuals have all of a sudden gotten worse. It's because of the environment the individuals are in has gotten worse. Yeah, no, I would agree. And I would also just highlight that, you know, discussing how he got led to this point. And I would say I make similar analyses of like how January 6th people got led to January 6th without fully right. understanding the implications. You know, it's not trying to absolve anybody of what they're doing. I think that 
goes back to what I was saying before with like people are always trying to absolve people in power or if people are sort of like referencing power by stepping on like workers or stepping on marginalized groups they're like always looking for excuses for why it's okay to do that but we need to understand you know whether or not he has mental illness whether or not he's going through a hard time whether or not you know it makes his life in any way more e easier that does not give him license to be anti-semitic or spread anti-semitic propaganda that's just you know all the excuses that were used to making for power and so they seem like to instinctually lead from like oh here's why he's doing it that's why it's okay to do it it's like it's not it's like no matter you know it's not okay on a personal level i think the individualism in america makes it easy to you know make that argument that no matter what you're going through it doesn't make it okay to be like shit on other people obviously like you learn that in kindergarten <laughs> like yeah well um i would recommend for folks because um a lot of this has been discussed without actually talking about the content of um, like say the documentary Kyrie promoted and it's it i think it's just a limitation of like say particularly basketball podcasts uh, you know what you want to talk about the first couple of weeks and not get into this sort of stuff but drew mcgarry uh at the san francisco gate at sf gate uh did review he watched all three of it drew mcgarry watched all three plus hours of the movie so you don't have to uh, Kyrie irvin's not and this is the article Kyrie irvin's non-apology is as empty and incoherent as that stupid movie yeah so if you want to uh um sort of review as to the content which a lot of people including i haven't watched it um i would appoint people towards drew mcgarry also there's SFK. a rolling stone article uh that does a, a very good job in it as well that we highlighted on espn so um what for you yeah. oh yeah no and pablo torre on espn did it on his show debatable uh, did a interesting segment where they covered a lot of like the why would we say this movie is anti-semitic and you know cool Hitler, because that's the, that, that's said. that's what worries me about a moment like this is people you're gonna see have a certain sliver of people who are like well you're not engaging with his arguments you're just canceling him because the predicate for that thing has been set by uh, one of the major political parties and like people like jonathan chait um and so like there actually is reasons why this is all bullshit and uh uh, and people should look that up i guess why I, yeah and and that was some of the reaction to like uh us calling out uh his anti-semitism on espn <clears throat> which was you know basically it, 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 very similar reaction so i'm uh, just uh, educate yourself on some of the stuff he's trying to spread there um it's like incredibly insidious